You know what? I'm sick and tired of people being deceived by the enemy and the enemy using people to deceive other people. You know, this movement in some Christian churches that's been going on is it's basically like this. You have the power to do things. You have the power to do this and do that. You have the power to get a new life. You have the power. They say the name Jesus, but they say that you, specifically you have the power and that you can accomplish these things and that you can achieve these things. And that's not giving glory to God at all. That's not giving glory to our Lord Jesus Christ at all. That's giving power to you and saying that you can believe in the name of Jesus, but you can do things under your own power. Let me tell you something. I'm going to be really forthcoming when it comes to this. Humans cannot defeat the devil. It is impossible for a human being to defeat the devil without Jesus Christ, without the power of Jesus. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, if you don't have faith in Jesus Christ, in his teachings, in his word, then you have no power. You can say all the cheerful things you want to. You can celebrate with everyone you want to. Everyone can be happy and joyful in oneself. Everyone can achieve whatever they want to. Get whatever business they want to. Just all that. Graduation, whatever. But you have no power to defeat the devil. I'm in Proverbs chapter 27. I'm just going to read this to you and let the Holy Spirit take over. 2719. It says, as a face is reflected in water, so the heart reflects the real person, the heart reflects the real person. So when someone starts speaking about self, it's just all about self. When someone starts speaking about you, it's just all about you. This is why when I go on Facebook and I'm checking out friends and so on and so forth, I see women of God, women of God truly talking about Jesus Christ and, and spreading the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and speaking about the joy and the delight of God. But I see other so-called Christian females out there. I say females because we have a lot of females on Facebook displaying themselves. I see a lot of other Christian females on Facebook and they're just saying, well, you know, it's all about self. It's all about me. I believe in Jesus, but it's all about me. Let me tell you something. God is trying to make you into the likeness of his son. He's, he's trying his very best, but you're trying your very best to be your best self, to be a better self. You see, you're placing yourself as God. In the Bible, and I've, I just finished reading this part. God was speaking about how the devil used to work for him. The devil in all his splendor. But that was this was before the betrayal, before the uh, rebellion. How he was just displayed in all his, 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 his I guess his stones and all his, his glory and so on and so forth. The, the devil, Lucifer. And he used to work for God. And ever since God created Lucifer... He used to, he was just perfect. But then the corruption, the, the, the image, like, I guess, I guess, uh, well, I'm just paraphrasing. The devil looked at himself and he says, wow, I'm so great. I'm my, my pridefulness. I'm just so wonderful. I'm so powerful. Look at me. Wow. You know what I can do? I can go ahead and, and, and be higher than God. I could be better than God. And you see, that's the devil mindset. And that was the devil's heart. And it's the devil's heart. So in the same exact way that you have pride in yourself and you have pride in your self-achievements, it's the same exact way that the devil had pride in his achievements, in his self-achievements, in his self-ways, in his self-image, and not in the image of God. His heart reflected who he was. His actions, his words reflected who he was. So your actions and your words reflect what's in your heart. Regardless, if you say, you, if you love Jesus, if you go to church, you help out in the church, you help out in the ministry, so on and so forth. You help out in all this, but you still promote yourself and you still promote other people saying that people can get out of bondage with their own power. And that doesn't bring glory to God at all. Number 20, it says, just as death and destruction are near, are never satisfied. So human desire is never satisfied. Human desire is never satisfied with God. Someone discovers the Lord Jesus Christ. They spend like maybe months or years walking with Jesus. And then they're not satisfied with their walk. Because they, soon enough they get bored. They say, this is boring. Just reading the Bible and praying. 
and just talking to God and listening to God is kind of boring. I need something more exciting. I need something more joyful. I need something more delightful. So therefore, I'm going to go to people that talk about themselves or talk about power in you. Power in oneself. Joy in oneself. See, that's what happens. People go to God, but yet they want more than God. They want more than what Jesus has to offer. This, it just creates a deception that you can say Jesus, but you can go to yourself. You can go to church and work in the church and say the name of Jesus and praise the Lord Jesus, but you can still go to yourself. That's not giving praise to God at all. In the Bible, and I believe it's Romans chapter 12, it says to truly, to truly worship God. Give yourself as a holy sacrifice to God. That's truly the way to worship God. So are you giving yourself as a holy sacrifice to God? Giving your temple as a sacrifice to God so that the Holy Spirit can live in you? Or are you giving yourself to yourself? Are you giving yourself to the world? That's the question. Because I'm saying all this because I don't want anyone being deceived anymore. I want to separate the sheep from the goats. And hopefully those goats actually become sheep. Actually get convicted and become sheep. To repent and turn to God. Amen. 21. It says fire tests the purity of silver and gold. But a person is tested by being praised. By being praised. That's flattery. You're being flattered. By what you're receiving. Oh, you're a great person. You're doing a great job. You know what? When Jesus started receiving praise, was he flattered? Was he like, oh, oh it's just so wonderful. Look at all these people following me. Oh, my goodness. I can create my own kingdom right here on earth. You guys want to set me up as king? Okay, yeah, yeah. Come on, come on. Put the crown on me right now. No, I don't want that crown of thorns. I want a real crown. You see, if someone truly had the Holy Spirit, and they were getting praised. They would stay in a, in a state of humbleness. They wouldn't be like, oh, I'm just so wonderful. I'm just so great. I'm doing great things. It is God that is doing great things. It is God that gets the worship and the praise and the glory. Not you, not me, no one else. Praise the Lord for who he is. Give the light to the Lord. Worship the Lord. Give God all the glory. No one else. All right? I'm going to read something else to you. One last thing. 1 John chapter 2, 15. It says, Do not love this world, nor the things it offers you. For when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. When you love this world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. So, Jesus loves the people of the world, but he doesn't love the ways of the world. He doesn't love the systems of, of this world. He doesn't love the joyful commercials and the, and the delight of, of commercials on TV and so on and so forth. He, he doesn't love the love that this world has to offer. God is love. God is love. So if God is love and we are seeking God, we are to receive his Holy Spirit. And God reveals who he is and that is love. All of the scriptures is love because God is love. That's all it is to it. 16. For the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure, a craving for everything we see, and pride in our accomplishments and possessions. These are not from the Father, but are from this world. And this world is fading away along with everything that people crave. But anyone who does what pleases God will live forever. So, you can use the things of this world, but just don't love the things of this world. That's all it is to it. Don't set things or don't set worldly achievements. Don't set your business. Don't set your diploma. Don't set your degree. Don't set all your achievements of winning whatever. That promotion, that race, that title. Don't set that as number one in your life because God is not impressed by your career. God is not impressed by what I do on the job. God is not impressed by my car. God is not impressed with anything that anyone does except for your faith. That's all there is to it. Your faith in him. That's it. When Jesus walked the earth, Jesus was surprised by the faith of the Roman officer 
the, the one of the Roman commanders. He was surprised by his faith. He's like, I haven't seen faith in all of Israel like this. This Roman officer isn't even an Israelite. But yet, look at his faith. He came to me. He's part of the Roman state, the Roman Empire, but he came to me for a healing. See, that's the kind of faith that people need to have. Believe that Jesus walks in all power and all glory. So, if you're a true Christian, you would, you would talk less about yourself and more about Jesus. You would, you would talk less about your power or what you can do in your achievements and more about the power of Jesus Christ and more about the things of the kingdom and more about the word of God. That's someone who has changed their mindset from the world and, change, and allow Jesus to change their mind into the things of the kingdom of God. Because when we, when we reach the kingdom of God, it's not going to be about you. It's going to be about Jesus and our heavenly father. It's going to be about worshiping him and praising him. Giving yourself as a holy sacrifice to God. If you're giving yourself as a holy sacrifice to God on earth, then you're going to give yourself as a holy sacrifice to God in the kingdom of God. You're going to be used to that kind of environment. So are you giving yourself as a holy sacrifice to God or are you giving yourself to yourself or giving yourself to the things of this world? Giving yourself to the, your achievements that everyone just cheers for and so on and so forth. That everyone is just so happy. And let me tell you one thing before I end this video. People are going to cheer and be so happy and so joyful for what you have done or what you will do. Is God going to be pleased with all your achievements just like people are? Is God like people? That's what I'm saying. Does God think the same exact way that people do? Does God have joy and in, in cheer you on in the same exact way people do? The way that the world does. Read the Bible for yourself. Have a true relationship with God so that you can know what pleases God. What pleases God is you giving yourself as a holy sacrifice to God and allowing God to use that temple that he has given you specifically to worship him and praise him, to speak praise to him and also to spread the good news, spread the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not spread about how good of a person you are. Not spread of how great of a person you are and how you can change someone's life or how they can change their own life without Jesus. But yet you say that you love Jesus. We need to stop trying to be like other people and just be like our one teacher, the Messiah. That's who we need to be like. We need to stop trying to be like these other people on TV and on Facebook and on TikTok. We need to stop trying to be like other people in the church. We need to just have a relationship with God. And then, you know, when you hang out with someone long enough, you start to be like them. So if you study the Bible diligently and you see the attributes of God in someone that means that person has been hanging around with God for quite a bit they've been having a relationship with God for quite a bit they communicate with God quite a bit but if you don't study your Bible then you're just gonna say that okay this person said that said that he believed in Jesus or she said that she believes in Jesus so therefore I, I'm gonna automatically follow them and believe them I'm just gonna listen to whatever they got to say because they're a really happy person. They put on a good smile. They do all kinds of celebrations, so on and so forth. They say they're, they're, they're a wonderful person and they're always smiling. So I'm just going to believe what they got to say. And they go to church with me. We are to be in the likeness of God's one and only son. Not in the likeness of a church. Not in the likeness of a certain environment here on earth. We're not to be in the likeness of anyone. Except our Lord Jesus Christ who died on the cross for us. Did Jesus die on the cross so that we could be in the likeness of someone else? Did Jesus die on the cross and got tortured on the cross so that we can just do our own thing? And say, see, Jesus will receive this kind of joy, this kind of worldly joy, this kind of worldly love. Did Jesus die on the cross so that you can just do whatever you want to do and act how you want to act? And you say that God has grace but he gives that grace so that you can be transformed into the likeness of his son. He didn't give that grace so that you can just go ahead and do whatever you want to do. And you say God will receive that because people are receiving it. My church is receiving it. My pastor is receiving it. 
the ultimate thing is it's Jesus receiving it. It's God receiving it. It's God receiving you. Are you offering yourself so God can use you to benefit the kingdom and to give him the glory? But that's all I got to say, guys. Just want to say I love you. I love you enough to tell you the truth. Jesus first, God first, and may the kingdom always come first. Stay blessed in the Holy Spirit. Amen.